very, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Right? See that now? I said, yeah, we want to watch the movie. Yeah, yes. Michael, we have a few cougars in the crowd today. That's okay, it's alright, I can handle it. Don't be scared, as they say. <laughs> okay, so. Without any further ado, Michael Sipion, please take it away. Tell us what you're going to make. Thank you. What I'm going to make today is a, I'm going to substitute spaghetti with a multi-grain penne. I'm going to do that with clams and a plum tomato white wine clam stock with fennel and leeks. A little bit of cooked down, a little bit of white wine. And uh, I'm just going to get it started right now. First thing you want to do, always get your pan hot. It's going to make the oil spread around a little bit. We're going to start about two tablespoons of olive oil. The olive oil I'm using today is by Vita Bella. Uh, it's cold pressed, it goes right from the vines in a the bottle. There's no heat processing, bottled instantly right out of the vine. We're going to use two tablespoons of that, top pan. There we go. So we'll let that heat up a second. Um, what I do, my name is as you know, my name is Blake Sipion. I started a health club, personal training health club, about 18 years ago. My clients really dedicated themselves to coming in, making their appointments three times a week. They did not dedicate themselves to eating healthy because a lot of them had their own businesses. They didn't have enough time to go home and cook. I started prepackaging meals for them. At the end of the workout, they would take them out of my refrigerator, put it in a microwave. They got a balanced meal. I weigh everything out. I balance everything out as far as protein and carbohydrates. And, um, Last year, someone asked me to do a wedding for them, which I really didn't plan on doing. I had to come up with a name for my company. It's Sano, and it means healthy in Italian. So, I'm trying to get this started right now. And not really heating up here. I'll let it go in another couple minutes. Anybody have any questions about anything health, fitness, diet, my training, my background, how I started? Okay. Yes. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. She's coming out with the microphone, man. Here she comes, here comes Marley. Be right there with the mic, because we want to hear this question. I think it has something to do with Thanksgiving. Okay, what's your question now? With Thanksgiving coming up, how do you plan for, like I want to do a lot of I still can't hear you, I'm sorry. Thanksgiving is coming up, and I want to do a lot of appetizers. I have some, you know, fresh gallons and some of this catch up for me to bring in some fresh shrimp. Okay. So what would be the best, because I'm looking at the olive oil or like the type of situation where that's happening. Olive oil, canola oil. Um, what I like to do with an appetizer, you said scallops, you want to use that scallops for an appetizer? I would do a smashed yam puree, where you can get a bunch of chicken stock, put your yams in the chicken stock with some shallots and some carrots. Season it when it comes out with coriander and sage, a little bit of honey and some orange zest. Drain all the water out of it first before you add those ingredients. Put it in a food processor or if you just want to hand smash it, that's fine. Little dollops of it. With a pan sear citrus scallop over the top, get some fresh lemon or fresh fresh uh, orange zest. Zest it right over the scallops before they go into the pan. And the secret to scallops, to get them nice and tender, you want to sear them three minutes on the first side. As soon as you flip them over, let it go for a minute, take the pan off the flame and let it finish out. So they're gonna be nice and tender, they're gonna cut through like butter. Place that right over the dollop of the smashed yam. It's a winner. It's a winner. If you want to squeeze a little extra lemon juice on the end, you can do that also. Michael, she says she wants you to write that down for her. What's that? She wants you to write that down for her. Oh, I will. You come over to my table. My booth is on. I'm right over here. I'm right outside here. I'll I think you might have to write a book, Mike. I don't know. I'm sorry? I think you might have to write a book. I'm, I'm going to try. That's what I'm hoping I'm doing right now for January, so I'm going to get to that. All right, so what I'm going to do here, my oil's starting to get hot. I'm going to start out with some fresh leeks. Just go right into the pan. I use three large. In with that, I'm going to do some fennel and a little bit of sea salt. Tell them everything, all those flavors come out of there. Just put the, put the flavors out, give it a real quick stir. And just let it sit a minute. So Michael, can I ask you a question? Yes. I'm looking at those clams up there. So are they like fresh clams? They're fresh like clams and I mince them. I shoved them earlier this morning and I mince them really fine. I just feel like it attaches more to the pasta with the pasta in the dish. And you get clams in every bite. Nice. Like so you that. recommend the freshest of ingredients. So you actually shuck them yourself, dice them up. Did okay. you catch them too? No, I didn't catch them. I didn't have time. <laughs> I would have tried that. I didn't have time. I'd be really impressed by that. <laughs> we'll let this all take down a little bit. And I am a big fan of red pepper. So there's a little fresh red pepper flakes in there with it. 
And again, so to let it cook down a little bit. So I started working out when I was about 12 years old. When I was about 14, I really started getting into the nutrition aspect of it. Uh, it's 85% of your red product is going to. And what really inspired me was a girl named Kim. <laughs> and that's why I started cooking. I said, you know what, if I can cook for this girl, Kim, and I seen, I would see my mother cook my father all the time. My father would always give her a kiss at the end of the meal, whatever. So you know what, I bet you I can get a kiss from that girl if I make her a great meal. And I started cooking, that's where, that's where it all came from. Ended up going out with her for three years after that, and then she, I was going out of history. She kicked me away, so. But you that got was the my kiss. inspiration. You got the kiss, though. I got the kiss, yeah, awesome. I got the kiss. Got Are you taking notes kiss. over there? Now, <laughs> where the inspiration for this came was my son. He was seven years old. He loved shrimp. He loved uh, shrimp scamping over linguine. He loved clams with linguine. And yucky was his favorite dish. It was his favorite pasta. That's what he really liked. So he said, Dad, why don't we do, why don't you make the dinner like clams and a yucky? And I told clams and yucky at the potato base. Why not? It sounds like it's going to work. It did work. Yeah. Me being who I am, what I do, I'm going to put a healthy spin on it. I use some multi-grade penne instead. So, hope you all like this. This is a really different uh, spin for an Italian tradition. What I'm going to do next, everything's starting to cook down. I'm going to add in some fresh plum tomato. And I'm also going to put the clams right in with it to make them a little bit more tender. Now right now what I'm doing is just building flavors. I'm building different levels of flavor. I just want to let that sit a little bit. And now you're probably going to ask, how does he have white wine in here and it's healthy? But what's going to happen with the white wine? The alcohol is going to cook out. So it's not really going to have an effect on you at the end of the meal. Everybody hear me okay? Okay. I'll let that go for a little bit. Uh, my sponsor today is why I'm up here is Mateo's Pasta, located in South Philadelphia. That's where I'm from. Born and raised right around the Italian market. Um, I have some samples of this product at my table. I'm actually doing a yucky today. Why I have a yucky today at the table is because in the training world, when you work out in the fitness industry, you always need a cheat day to eat something that you want to eat and just go off the edge. People are so afraid to eat carbohydrates nowadays. They want to do carb-free diets. It's the worst thing you can possibly do. Uh, some people who run, does anybody here work out? Anybody work out at all? Some people really overdo as far as training and running. And when you run that much, your body just burns off carbohydrates. Burns it off so much that you start taking away from muscle. And you'll notice a lot of marathon runners and stuff where they're really loose and jiggling when they run. Doing a heavy meal of carbohydrates during the week, there's nothing wrong with that. You wanna make sure it's earlier towards the day. You wanna kinda of eat in reverse. You eat, early, eat your heavier meals earlier in the day, about 12, one o'clock, always steer towards your low glycemic carbs, which would be like your white beans, your brown rice, your sweet potatoes towards the end of the night, towards the end of the day. Okay, this is gonna to start to cook down. And what I'm gonna do, I like to cook with is a Pinot Grigio. Give it a nice, nice sweet essence at the end of the meal. And this was given to me just now by the girls over at Chadsford Winery because I forgot my wine cup. You're gonna go around three times, which is basically a cup, and bring that back up to a boil. Always keep a high flame when you're cooking. It's gonna sear those flavors in. It's gonna cook a lot quicker for you. And what I'm gonna do now is put the pasta in the water or it'll do a boil. Again, Gorilla Plus is what I like to use. Um, and this right here is multigrain. And it's high in alpha lipoic acid. It's also made with cannellini beans, white beans. Oh, I forgot to salt my water. Cannellini beans, white beans, and multigrain. What that's going to do for you, alpha lipoic acid will help burn fat. It's heart healthy, it will help lower cholesterol. And that's basically what everybody wants and everybody's looking for nowadays. So Michael, how is the multi-grain pasta different from the whole wheat pasta that you see in the stores? Okay, even when you see a, if you just see a wheat pasta, a wheat pasta is the last cut before they bleach it white. Eating wheat pasta, not saying whole wheat, eating wheat pasta is just like eating white pasta. This doesn't taste at all like wheat pasta or multi-grain. It's made with egg whites, it's a lot more flavor, it's a lot more seasoned, it's a little more dense, and really, with a wheat pasta, you don't get too much of the uh, gravy or sauce to continue with this, you won't. It has a little bit of starch in it, but nothing that's really going to impact the blood sugar levels. 
So if you're looking at keep a low sugar diet, this one of pastas you want to go with. And like I said, on Sundays you have your nappy. Okay, you're okay, you're good to go with stuff like that. So it's okay to cheat is what you're saying. Exactly. You have to. See so people keep like here. You can cheat sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so wait for that smell for the wine to dissipate. And what I'm gonna do next right after that is actually put the clam stock in there. And that you want to stay pretty firm. What I'm going to talk about next is cheese. I don't know if you guys can see this. I got this from Claudio's on 9th Street, the Italian market in South Philadelphia. It's called Papato cheese. And the Sardinians basically live on this in Sicily. It has peppercorns already in it. It's a pecorino. It's a sheep's cheese. Sheep's cheese is a lot healthier. That also has alpha-lipoic acid in there. And it's heart healthy. It's a little bit higher in sodium, so what I do, I balance out, I only put my salt at the beginning of my vegetables, the rest of my salt will come here throughout the rest of my dish. It's all about creating balance and making those, fam make those flavors balance out at the end, create a nice little balance. I'm feeding myself a little bit there. But Am I doing okay? <laughs> Am I doing okay for my first time up here? They have a question. Yes. What's wrong with the Partially employees. <laughs> 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 well, Barry Saxon, he was on stage yesterday here. What's going on? What are you making? What's going on? I'm making a uh, multi grain penny and clam with a plum tomato white wine clam stuff. It smells Finish good out here. with some fennel and leaves. Are you cool, my man? Absolutely. <laughs> I was waiting for that wine smell to dissipate. My pasta's going. So, Michael, how do you reconcile being a foodie and being a fitness enthusiast because you love to eat, you love to cook. I love to eat, I love to cook. Yet you're all slim and trim and buffed. How do you do this? It's all about the way I eat during the week. I do still work out. I work out hours like I did before. I've been at it for 29 years. I started working out when I was 12 years old. So I've been at it for 29 years. Um, and I love it. It's just, it's part of my life. I can't go a day without it. Just like with the diet, you need to cheat. You need to cheat workouts every once in a while, taking that week off or two two, three times a year, nothing wrong with it. Your body needs an outside stimulus constantly to make those changes. So that's pretty much how I do it. Um, my cheat days are happening in Rittenhouse Square in Center City during the week. I go <laughs> dinner maybe once, twice a week, but I do eat about seven, eight times a day. I start at five o'clock in the morning. So if I'm eating one bad meal out a day at nighttime at the Capitol Grill, one of those places, you know what, water works. My, my balance, I'm still eating 95% healthy throughout that day. Wait, did you just say you eat seven to eight times like a seven, day? Eight times a day, yeah. I'm up about 18 hours. I'm working about 18 hours. So are they full-size meals? Are they mini meals? What are my they? My breakfast is my biggest. I like having pasta for breakfast. I'm big on pasta for <laughs> breakfast with chicken, with seafood, whatever. I create my balance that way. I'm very busy right off the bat. My, my appointments, my personal training appointments start at 5.30 in the morning. So they're on the treadmills waiting for me to get there. By the time I get there, I'm going straight through the rest of the day, about 30 appointments a day. And I'm feeding them along the way. They're, they're ordering food for me the night before, and it's in the refrigerator that morning for them. They take it for lunch, and it's ready to go. All right, the wine smell starting to cook out. Now I'm going to have my clam stock. And again, I want to bring it up to another boil. Now, with the clam stock, you don't want that to reduce. That's your flavor right there. You want to keep that lid on. Let all those flavors get to know each other, let them mingle. As soon as this comes up to a boil, my pasta is probably going to be ready to come out. So, you also do some catering as well. You have your own catering company here, right, right here in Philadelphia. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Um, I don't actually have a facility. But what I do, I will come to you. I do small parties. If you have a facility, I go to that facility, I prepare your meals there. Anything from uh, bridal showers, bachelorette parties, weddings, I do all types of events. And recently this May, I was chosen in Philadelphia to pair the Jennifer Lopez movie premiere for the backup plan in Center City at the uh, Prince Theater. And it really went well. We had some really nice appetizers for that hors d'oeuvre. They wanted to put a healthy spin. They're very LA. They were looking for something really new and different to do. It's, they, somebody stumbled on my website. And next thing I did, we had a great event. It was a really, really nice affair. So, did you get to meet Jennifer Lopez? Yeah, she was, yeah, I met all her people. They gave her a good word for me. I wish I did, but uh, it was all good. It all turned out pretty good in the end. Uh, what else I'm up here for, who else I'm representing, is La Femme Hair Exhibition. I don't know if you've noticed the girls walking around with, I don't know where they are right now. I think they, they are got, back there. 
Yeah. Vanessa and Paulette, right here. Any girls want to come up front? Yeah, come on down. I am here to create uh, awareness for autism. I'm doing a big event in March. It's going to be held in Center City, Philadelphia, and it's a hair exhibition. And these are two of the models that are going to be at the show with me. It's going to be a great, great event. It's going to be a really great event. Uh, proceeds are going towards the Autism Artist, where it supplies art supplies for the children in autistic schools. The designer for this event is Miss Bethany Bell. Is Bethany in here? Okay. Okay. Paulette and Vanessa. Nice to see you. We're going to hand you guys out some flyers if you don't mind. Um, in the end, then you're going to have to taste my food over at the table. They actually chose me to donate the food for this event. I'm more than happy to do it. We're expecting about 500 people there, and we have some preliminary stuff coming up. So if you want to check out her website, they'll give you the most information on it. All right, starting to come to a boil here. Check out the pasta. I think you're the only chef so far to have models on the stage with you. You are a rock <laughs> I'm trying star. To, I'm trying to make an impression my first time up here. I'm the chef version I like that. when That's it comes to one. shows. <laughs> About two more minutes with the pasta. Next year, everybody will have models. I'm just starting. <laughs> I'm try, trying to start a trend here. That's right. Trying to start a trend. I'm actually also on November 20th going to be in. I'm sorry, November 19th in Cape May at Chef Jeff Johnson's place. He's right behind here at the Copperfish, and we're doing a ladies' night out. We're we're actually doing a cooking demo just like this. We're gonna do a five course meal. Um, $50 a person, paired off with a wine tasting at the end. So, if anybody's in the Cape May area, you can stop the Copperfish right over here. He's this table right here behind this curtain, and ask Jeff for some details. All right, I don't know if you can hear me out there. I wish he would come back, but uh, we're going to let this start to cook down here. It looks and smells absolutely great. Thank you, really. Thank you, really. Models get hungry, people. I am I'm so excited you. to know this. <laughs> <laughs> we eat a lot. We eat a lot. It doesn't show, though. You must be eating Chef Michael's food. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course they do. Jeff here. There he is. Here's Jeff, right here. How's everybody doing? I was just telling him a little bit that I'm going to be down there. Yeah. Well, uh, November 19th, you want to yep. give a little bit more full detail about it? Certainly. Uh, November 19th at uh, my restaurant, Copperfish on Broadway. It's in West Cape May. Anybody out here go to Cape May? No? Married. Daryl, thanks, guys. <laughs> but what it is is uh, Mike's going to come down. We're going to do a five-course dinner at the restaurant. A little demonstration style similar to this. And uh, just put some nice dishes together, and, and uh, proceeds are going to... Uh, go to his, his, his charity that he's together. So. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank you very much. That's how we roll, man. So. That's it. That's all I got. So. <laughs> you're back to Mike. Thank you, Sean. All right. As it's starting to cook down, lemon always lightens up the meal. It makes it feel a lot, fre a lot more fresh at the end. So I'm going to zest some fresh lemon juice, for, uh, lemon zest right over the top, directly into the plate. It's a pan. I also like finishing my dish off with black pepper. I really don't put it in the beginning. I just feel like you don't use as much at the end, but that flavor, that fresh cracked black pepper flavor, stays with you a little bit longer than putting it in the beginning. So that's just something I like to do. It's just my preference. It's, nothing here is written in stone. You could alter your dish however you want to alter this dish. I'm just going to do it my way today. Your way is good. I'm trying. I'm liking it already. I'm trying. Okay, now what you really want to do here you're going to see the sauce is loose. You want to kind of let it get tight around the pasta. You're going to see the pasta change color to where it goes white. Where with, like I was saying before, your regular pasta is pretty much white. stays the same color all the time. This will start to turn a little translucent on you. And that's what you want. Now, the red pepper is going to start to go with the end. I like a little spicy. Papato cheese, about a quarter cup. I explained to you about the benefits of papato. Like I said, it's a sheep's cheese. We're going to do 110 years old in uh, Sardinia. Drinking olive oil and papado cheese because they have the alpha acid and a monounsaturated fat in the olive oil. Looks like you've got about a minute left. Anybody have any other questions? Any questions out there? What looks and smells?
it's really great job. I'm actually going to take some of this over to my booth, and if you're here, if you want to come over and sample it, you can come over and sample. Yeah, so our samples are fresh lemon over the top. And which one is your booth, Chef? Uh, Sano Catering. I think I'm on the mic. I'm 5'3", no, that's not it. I'm the second aisle out. from the back in the middle. It's Sano Catering. That's S-A-N-O, right? And again, yep, it means healthy in Italian. It means healthy in Italian. So you can learn right, it. Here it comes. It's all coming together now. That looks so amazing. It's so hard to believe that this is so good and healthy for you. I'm so excited. I'm trying to make everybody a believer. Another thing that I'm really trying to get involved with is changing vegetables and, and chicken and stuff like that is so inexpensive. Why these schools are feeding these children overly saturated high sugar foods when right? there's nothing cheaper than you can get than vegetables. And it's just the guidelines actually got If it wasn't for this guy, I don't know what I would do. He just gave me a great idea. He brought me up some cups, so I'm going to sample everybody in the audience right here. Oh, this way you make sure you get everything and you're not left short. Go to the market. With some free food. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Finished up with some like with some vinegar, plum tomato, vegetable stock. Go check it out. That's all over here. Go check it out. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, thank you very much. 